Okay, there's a lot of things in life you've got to tolerate. You might have to tolerate your children, you might have to tolerate your job, but with an engine, you also got to work on your tolerances as well. And today, we're going to use Flexi Gauge. Hey guys, welcome back to MG Rebuild. As I said in the intro, we are going to work on the tolerances for the uh, for the engine, and what we are doing is the actual main bearings. Now, the reason for the working on these tolerances is there's actually got to be a certain amount of gap between the bearing and the crankshaft. Too big a gap, you don't you lose your oil pressure. Too small a gap, you don't actually have enough uh, room for oil to get in there and lubricate everything and stop it from wearing out. So I don't actually have the the gauges or the instruments to be able to actually do all that. Um, one, they're expensive, and secondly, I don't have them. But another way of doing that is actually using something called flexi gauge or plasti gauge, depending on where you find it in the world. Now there's two sides to it. There is an imperial side, so you've got your inches there, so it works in thousands. Or the other side is in millimeters. Now there's also different colors. You've got the blue like this one, and you've got green, red, and yellow as well. So <clears throat> depending which color it is, is to the actual um, tolerances or the, the, the thickness of the actual uh, range it actually works for. Okay, the actual tolerances for the, the main bearings is between 8 thou and 30 thou. Now, the one we're using today is the green one, which is actually between 10 and 30 thou. So it fits within that range. Now, you can just open them up and you can see that little green line, if you can zoom in on that, that's the actual plexi, uh, flexi gauge or plastic gauge. It's very, very thin and very fragile and breaks so easily. But anyway, to start off with, what we need to do is put the bearings back in the block and put the crankshaft in, but we also need to make sure everything is spotlessly clean with some brake cleaner. So as you can see there, I've got the um, the, the top main bearings in there now. I'm just giving them a quick clean up with some um, brake cleaner. Now it's important not, not to touch the actual bearings, the bearing faces with your fingers. <clears throat> the acid from your fingers will actually eat into the actual bearing casing. So we just turn that a few times just to make sure that everything is free, which it is coming up beautiful. And then we'll put the actual, sorry, we won't do that. We'll put some flexi gauge on first. We'll just do to the number one bearing because it's gonna be the same for all of them. We just break off a piece, which I just dropped and I'll break off another piece. And we'll keep going until I find a piece I don't drop.
Okay. <clears throat> now we've got to make sure we've got the bearing cap around the right way, because I've marked these earlier when I was taking the bearing off. Actually, Lachlan, let's come over here for a sec. And I'll show you where I'll put the, the plastic gauge. See, so I've just got it sitting along there on the very top there. It's normally a little bit hard to see. Now, the most important thing is now, is to not to move the crank. If you move the crank one, once the actual bearing cap goes on, basically you're gonna be smearing it and you won't get an accurate reading. So we'll just put the bearing cap on now. Just down nice and straight. No twisting or anything like that. Not that you can actually twist it much. And then we put the, put the nuts on. And then we've got to torque it up to 63 foot pound. Oh, just going to make sure we do it nice and even. So do both sides at a time. Okay, so that one's right. Okay, so that's all we need to do there now, is all we've got to do is undo it again, with the bracket, <coughs> bracket bar, and then we lift it off. Now, got to bring the camera over. You can now see how the actual plexi, sorry, the plastic gauge or the flexi gauge has been smeared. It's been spread across there. Now, what we need to do now is make sure I've got the right scale. So as you can see on, on this, this is what the actual measurements are. The sizing's the same, but each side's got one. One's in millimetres and one's in imperial. So this one's in millimetres. We want to go imperial, so we use this side. What we've got to do is to see which one it's matching up against. That one's a little bit bigger than that. It's just a fraction over that. And that looks pretty well spot on. Hopefully you can see that on the on the camera. Now that one is showing. My eyesight's not too good at the moment. It is showing 15 thou. Does that be correct, Lachlan? 15? Where is it? That one. That one just there? Yep. That's 15. So the tolerances, like I said earlier, are between 8 and 30. So that's right in the middle. That's exactly where we want it to be. So that bearing size is perfect for that bearing cap, for that crankshaft. Now, one important thing is once you've finished doing that, you don't scrape it off with your fingernails or anything like that. You must, you must take it off before you actually assemble the engine, but what you must use is brake cleaner. Otherwise, you could cause damage to it. So, just another squirt of brake cleaner, 
and just pat it off and it will break up. That's got that. And the same to the bearing cap as well. Because it does have it on both sides. There we go. <coughs> now I will do um, two and three. For the, for the main bearings and I also once I've got the pistons in I also would be doing the big ends as well um, I can't do that at the moment until I've got the camshaft in can't put the camshaft in until my uh, front cam bearing arrives hopefully it'll be this week so it'll be something else to show you in the next episode so that's all for now for the um, the tolerances it's very straightforward it doesn't replace the mechanical uh, also the use of the actual gauges and so forth but if you don't have a gauge um, it is still a very good uh, tool to see how, how well it's going to be I now know I'm going to have good oil pressure well if I have an oil pressure problem it's not going to be due to the actual bearings being too big or too small so they're, they're a good fit okay today actually is a very important day for me or then actually for my car today's is actually my TD rolled off the assembly line 70 years ago. So it's actually, it has now turned 70 as of now. You can see it's come a long way since I bought it um, back in August 2018. Um, it's now got a nice coat of paint on there and it's looking quite good. The engine is just got to basically be assembled now. And the rest of the actual panels, which I'll just show you in here, some light on the subject will just need to be put on the car as well so as you can see it's certainly come quite away from when the day I brought it home in that rusty old shell that it was that it was in now just a quick little update or an update or just a bit of a confession here to make um, the other day I was actually cleaning up the, the gearbox ready for it to be painted and so forth and um, I had a little bit of an incident. I had it on a what we call a milk crate here in Australia and I actually had taken off the, the bottom uh, mount and I was actually cleaning the inside of the bell housing. The problem is when I, when I put the pressure on from the high pressure hose it fell off the milk crate and onto the ground and as you can see there it's got quite a nasty crack all the way down possibly right round so it's got three big cracks in there now another one through there another one down through there as well a no, small one there so it's gonna have to be replaced thankfully I actually have found one and also have found uh, the actual there's a bracket down underneath there as well it's like a little hole um where a pin goes through to to bolt it to the actual chassis that was broken and apparently that's a common a common theme with these gearboxes but i do have another another rear housing coming along as well to pardon me, to replace that with so that'll be something happening within the next couple of weeks in the next video or two so accidents do happen it's not the first thing I've broken building this car and I'm hoping it's going to be the last but look the, the odds are it won't be I'll be breaking something else no doubt but as you can see it's it's a bit of a mess it could be welded but I'm not going to weld this one just yet I'll I'll leave them alone and then replace it with the other one for now Okay, so that's all we've got for today's video. We've checked the tolerances on the on the main bearings. We've celebrated a big milestone birthday for the TD. 
and I had a confession with that um, broken bill housing. So anyway, so if you like what you see, like the videos, please subscribe to the channel. Um, our membership is growing quite well at the moment and I'd like to be able to keep that going so we can um, make some bigger and better better things on the channel. Um, if you like the merchandise, jump on our on our on our store, which is just in the description down below. And don't forget to hit those notifications and make a comment on the video if you like what you see. So until next time, I'll see you later.